housing. Housing that you already have, housing that you don't have and would like to have, housing that you used to be able to afford and can no longer afford is going to be a big issue on the doorsteps if candidates knock on your door of your house, wherever that is, uh, and ask you what matters to you. I mean, inevitably, the cost of living is going to be high uh, on the political agenda and the NHS as well. But housing is so closely related to both of those. You know, your health and well-being begins in your home. And the quality of your home uh, it absolutely contributes to your health and well-being. And the cost of that house contributes to your health and well-being. They are all, as three topics, they are all so interconnected. Um, I think it's going to be the absolute central, um, uh, sort of centrifugal force of the general election campaign. And if it isn't, it should be. Uh, so Keir Starmer, uh, we're told in a Times article today, is targeting voters who are pro-house building in uh, what's being described in the article uh, as a war on nimbyism. Um, they see it as a vital path to, as, as a vital part, I should say, of Labour's path to power. Um, it, it is expected to be a central part of Labour's manifesto. Um, I mean, the problem for the Conservatives on this is they just haven't built enough houses. They have not uh, stood by the commitments that they made and have ignored even pleas from their own supporters to build, build, build. But that seems to be the message from Labour this year. Um, we'll hear a bit later in the programme what Sadiq Khan has been saying on the matter. But let's hear what the Labour leader, Sakir Starmer, said at the Labour Party conference in Liverpool in October of last year. A future must be built. That is the responsibility of serious government. And if we continually wash our hands of this task, we all end up in a rut just like now. So it's time to get Britain building again. It's time to build one and a half million new homes across the country. Opportunities for first-time buyers in every community. New development corporations with the power to remove the blockages. New infrastructure to support families and communities to grow. Roads, tunnels, power stations built quicker and cheaper. It's a future with more beautiful cities, more prosperous towns, new parks, green spaces, new public services, all aligned with our plan. And conference, sometimes the old Labour ideas are right for new times. Yeah, I think the lady uh, you had on earlier on from the I sort of summed up perfectly. Um, uh, this, uh, Labour have been talking about what they're going to build for the last year and a half, and it's a bit like the £365 million a week down to the um, NHS over Brexit. It's just not physically possible to do. Um, we haven't got the infrastructure. We haven't. We have. There's a real shortage of materials. We haven't got the labour force to do what they want to do. We haven't got. They haven't got the time to do it. And, and like I say, they can't just. Uh, and the most important thing is local opposition. I'm afraid I, I build houses for a living, and every time I go on, there's been a. There's been, there's been an objection to the planning. They don't. The people just don't like even a bin store built near them. So when you start talking about this massive uh, building, i.e. after the Second World War, mm. uh, with what? <laughs> and with who? And well, where? Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, those are, you're, you land on all the problems, but they're not, they're not a reason to not do anything, are they? No, I'm, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying that is. But, you know, you look at, you look at uh, uh, councils at the moment, you know, look at Woking Council. They tried their hand at being a, a developer, went mm -hmm. bankrupt. You know, it, it, it's, it, it, people don't understand that you can't just throw a house up anywhere or a community of any, without the infrastructure to support it. The existing well, that's position. where proper planning comes in, doesn't it? Town planning, area planning, place planning. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you, if you put... Say you put uh, 5,000 homes up, you've got to put three schools up, doctors. It, it, you know, and they're talking about... Uh, they can do it in 18, two years. It's, it's, it's just virtually impossible to do it in that time scale unless, unless they have a carte blanche and they turn around and say, right, where we say we're going to build, we're going to build. We have no objections, which they won't be able to do. You know, you've got all the environmental people um, objecting, as well as local residents. And, and it, 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 well, planning but, is an no, absolute but not all. Minefield. I'm sure it is, but not all. I don't doubt it is. Not all objections are, you know, fusspot objections, are they? Some no, of them, all, some of them are legit. By, they're all overturned by central government. You know, you go back to Mr Pickles when he was in the, the, the local... Uh, 
council uh, minister. Lord he Pickles, so more as he than is now. Put in. Pun? Lord Pickles, as he is oh, now. Oh, oh, sorry, he's been elevated, is he? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that, that comes with something really good about you. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it goes back to that. So central government... It, we, we, we become the enemy. And, and like you say, you get MPs, you get local people. Uh, it, it, honestly, it'd be like the old days when people were running around with pitchforks. They'd be up in arms. It, it, if you just start saying, right, we're going to put 6,000 houses there, 10,000 houses there, 16 blocks of flats there, it, honestly. Well, that's a it, lot it, in one place, isn't it? No, no numbers like that would happen in one place. Well, I'm, just, I'm working on a building site now where we've got 7,000 houses going up, and it's a village, Greenbelt, in Surrey. Uh, Greenbelt or Brown? Well, no, it's Greenbelt. It's, it's sorry, it, it, it's it's Cranley. It's, it's big, never been built in... on before. No, it's the biggest. And it's, a, it's the biggest village in England. And, we, and what we've had to do, what, what, what the planning, they've had to build a, a, a park in the middle, like a, to, to compensate for it. For it, but it's seven thousand houses going up, and that is that is in Surrey. That is in just what's in it Cranley. called? Cran- Cranley. Cranley, yeah. It's, it's um, Britain's biggest village. And the development that's going on here is unbelievable. So you think what? Promise promise lots, deliver little? Yeah. I, 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 I think the idea is right, and the, the motivation is, but I don't think they're really prepared for the problems they're going to be faced with. You're probably right. Well, I mean, you're you're in the thick of it, um, uh, in actually building them, so you'd know better than us, probably, Steve. Thank you. Stephen Guilford. Uh, Nick has called uh, from Sharpthorn in West Sussex. Hello, Nick. Hi there, Sheila. Nice to speak to you. Um, it's great to have you on the programme. You're, you're uh, a self-declared NIMBY or a so-called NIMBY. Uh, yeah, I probably am, actually. I, I, moved, uh, I moved here a couple of years ago uh, and we've just had planning application approved for 108 houses mm. um, on admittedly a brownfield site um, at the end of our road. Now, um, our village consisted of, I think it was 701 people at the last census. And um, now they're going to build 108 houses that could almost double the size of our village. Mm. Not to mention um, cars, obviously, deliveries, and four years worth of construction traffic up and down the two little roads that join what we would call the main road, um, which is single track. So it's going to be horrific for the people that live here. Um, It's all right. It's a nice area. And also the other thing about it is, which the council don't seem to have taken any notice of our objections or points at all, is the fact that it's a car-served community. We do have a local bus service. Service? Service. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) sorry. Sorry. It's all right. The thing with it is, it doesn't run on Sundays or bank holidays. And the nearest towns, East Grinstead and Crawley, if you were to work in Crawley and get a bus to Turner's Hill, Sharpform, um, the last bus leaves Crawley at 4.30 in the afternoon. So unless you worked, say, a, a regular shift pattern that gets you on that bus and gets you here, you're not getting home. So, so it's, not, it's not quite a commuter belt with a decent train service running through it, that kind of thing? <laughs> no. Um, the nearest proper train station is East Grinstead, closely followed by three bridges um, that gets you into town. Um, East Grinstead's got about 14 stops to get you into Victoria. And, of course, um, three bridges goes direct. I think if you can get a fast train, you can do four stops, I think, mm. into Victoria, and you can get one into all the way out to St Albans. But it's getting there, and that's the problem. If we've they've been granted these houses... There is, um, my main objection is not the housing, it's the access. So our small road, uh, I mean, there was more people who lived in our road than in my entire village when I lived in London. So, you know, it, it, it really is quite small. There's a tiny little shop, which I'm sitting outside at the moment, mm. cost cutter or whatever they call it, uh, a village sort of club, if you like. Um, and that's it, a small primary school, which is oversubscribed. And your nearest other school is in Turner's Hill. Um, or if you go the other way, you're going to East Grinstead. So if, for instance, you've got two or three kids of school, junior school, like primary school age, and you don't drive, you're going to have a struggle. You ain't getting them there. But there are established houses there already, aren't there? I'm having a look at Right yeah. Move. <laughs> I'm, just having, yeah, I'm yeah, snooping right on yeah, Sharpthorn. Yeah. yeah, have a look at... Um, there's, there's a couple of little roads there, Top Road. Mm-hmm. And our road, which 
is all Victorian stock housing. Mm. Um, our house was built in 1837, was one of two of the first kind of houses built in that area. Yeah, but do you um, not think that there were people then saying, oh, God, who's going to live here? Blimey, houses. <sighs> What's going to happen well, to my field? Reason, yeah, the main reason they built those houses was to build the um, the Bluebell Railway, which runs right the way through Sharpfall, as you can probably see. Mm. Um, and... You know, the the thirty percent of the new housing that's going to be uh, what they call affordable. I don't know whether they have association housing out here or whatever. Um, but generally, the people that need these affordable homes, and you know, rightly so, they should have them. But they have to realise that this community is car served. You can't really get anywhere and back. Well, presumably, people who buy there or rent there will look into that in the way you would anywhere you went to live. Yeah, and then just triple the size of our car problem. You know, it, it, the, the uh, we have a lot of congestion in the mornings trying to get out of here. And uh, if you want to try and get out at 8 mm. o'clock in the morning to get anywhere, you're waiting at the top of our road for quite some time. I know, it's um, a nightmare, isn't it? I mean, you know, I've just looked at the, was it 18, mid-1800s your house was built? Yeah, 1838 or something. Oh, the, po- the population of the UK then was 20 million. Yeah, it's three. It's three times that and more at the moment. So yeah, people also, have to live somewhere, don't they? They do. I mean, the thing is, honestly, I don't mind the houses being the end of our road. My problem and my objection was the access. Um, You're concerned that the place is just going to become unpleasantly gridlocked all the time. All the time with construction traffic. I'm, I'm a builder myself, so I know how this works. The mud and the disruption, yeah, yeah. constant traffic over a four-year period. It's just unthinkable at the moment. And it's it's happening, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's going ahead. Um, Thames, uh, oh, sorry, not Thames Water, it's Southern Water out here. So Southern Water did a desktop survey and said, yeah, it's fine, we'll be able to do that. But what they didn't take into consideration was um, just over a year ago before Christmas, we had uh, 12 days with no water whatsoever. Nothing. And then we have Why? the odd power cut that lasts 24 hours or so. So... If they want to come and live in a village, that's what you've got to expect, that sort of stuff. Why did you have no water for 12 days? We, do you remember we had a, a bit of a cold snap? And we get, because we're on a hill here, um, and we're right in the middle of the Ashdown Forest, so all the weather that's coming across, we get quite a lot of it. Mm. And basically it froze a large main and burst a large main in a couple of different places. Oh, I remember, and yeah, and you were all down. At part, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it shut off. We were on bottled water, um, if you could get some. But we were shut off for, well, 12 days. It came on the afternoon of Christmas Eve, which is quite lucky. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I I do feel your pain, particularly when it comes to traffic. There's nothing worse than just clogged traffic uh, anywhere that you live or work. Uh, uh, Just just hideous. Um, But isn't the the harsh reality, Nick, just that, you know, we, we have a housing crisis. That means a lack of housing or poor quality housing, or hideously expensive housing. And we can't just leave people to deal with that, can we? It doesn't help any of us if we just leave people to deal with that. No, I I think you're right. But there's also, if you look at our village, I I can only talk about our little one, um, but the housing around here is not cheap, as you can see from right there, probably. Um, So uh, these houses that this development company are going to sell this to a major developer, their uh, planning permission, that's what they do. They come out from London, obviously, and they develop these planning applications and they've got a lot of professionals involved. They're very slick, as you can imagine. Mm. Once the planning permission goes through, they then sell that on to a major developer. And it's going to have to be somebody big that's going to put the houses down there because it's, you know, there's just no service. There's no there's no um, amenities here. There's no There's nothing. You know, mm. a tiny little village shop, that's all you got. And if you if you don't drive and you struggle walking, you're not getting up the hill that's, that my house is on because yeah. it's really steep. Um, and then you go up the top of my hill, turn left, and there's another steep hill to get you to the main road. So it's, it's car service, and it's just going to double the amount of cars in our tiny little village, double the amount of traffic. And really, our local government, which I'm very disappointed in, doesn't really care about us at all. So you're not really a NIMBY, are you, Nick? Because you see the problems, you just can see new ones arriving because of the old problem. 
Yeah, completely. I, I think that there are other sites available. Even the size of that development could have been scaled back. You know, um, I, I think they wanted 130 odd houses there at first, but they managed to get it down to 108, and they passed that. Mm. Um, and the, I'm not to mention like the sewage problems and all the rest of that. It's all amenities, all services that we don't really have. Yet Southern Water did a desktop survey and went, "Yeah, fine, no problem. You can do that." Okay. Well, I, I wish you luck with it. Those four years of building. Thanks very much, Nick, for your call, Nick in Sharpthorn, in West Sussex. 